Today, the fun begins with the Minnesota Vikings franchise rebuild on Madden 23. Welcome back, everybody. It's episode two, and we're playing the very first regular season game today. If you want to skip there, there will be a timestamp to when we're getting week one underway. But I wanted to go through our things to do and recap the live stream I did over the weekend, watching games two and three of the preseason. I wanted to see how some of these players would play and just hang out, talk to everybody during the stream. It was a lot of fun. You can check it out if you want to. It's not super important. I'm recapping the important things here. We did make our first roster moves of the series, however, and the first thing I did was to release veteran receiver Albert Wilson. There are just so many younger receivers I wanted to see a lot more of. And we're getting those initial developments here with player upgrades. This is Patrick Jones, who is probably the fourth best pass rusher right now coming off the edge. I haven't made any kind of moves yet with Alexander Madison, but I like the running back depth on this team, so something might happen in the near future. But why don't we get into the actual preseason highlights? Two games here. I just wanted to get a feel for where this team is at starting off the series. And the first thing that was really apparent is that this edge rushing tandem of Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter has the chance to be real special. Now, the San Francisco offense was missing Trent Williams in this game, but Zadarius Smith was dominating Mike McGlinchey, and the poor backup tackle trying to block Daniil Hunter didn't do a whole lot of blocking. Shifting to the offense... This is a team of playmakers, and they looked great here in the entire preseason. Dalvin Cook as a runner and a receiver. And then you consider the wide receivers, Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. It sure made Kirk Cousins' job very easy when these guys would get open and catch anything thrown their way. The offense looked very prepared for the regular season. And there were some things that I'm really excited about that were on display. There's Garrett Bradbury getting out in the open field there to lead on a screen pass. And we come back to it here later on. And Dalvin Cook is able to break a tackle, get into the open field, and show off why he is one of the best running backs in the NFL. That's a special play not many players are making. I was shocked to see him all of a sudden break away and then break another tackle to keep it going. Screen passes didn't work well in Madden 22, but it could be a different story this time around. But we gotta talk about the backups. Kellen Mond. He didn't look good in this game. Simply put, these throws were not even close in many cases, and it took forever for him to complete just one pass. He never looked comfortable, was not accurate. Is this good enough to be the QB two? We let San Francisco get back in this game. They're down by two. Jimmy Garoppolo sacked by DJ Wanham, who looks to be our best edge rusher. He had a couple sacks here in preseason, but we go back to Kellen Mond, a chance to lead us down for a game winning drive. We trail by one. He's got a completion on a screen and it lost yards. On second down, that's better. We'll take it. So now it's third down. We're trying to get in field goal range here for Greg Joseph. And the offensive line's not doing him any help as he gets sacked. It brings up fourth down and the game. We're in desperation mode. Already lost the first preseason game late. And now Mond on fourth down gets it outside to Tristan Jackson. The game is extended. And then Mond almost throws a pick. We get to second down. This pass tipped up. It is picked off this time. And San Francisco wins it after a dreadful showing from the backup offense. I was hoping to see a lot more from Kellen Mond. And as a result, we decided to bring in Cam Newton as a mentor and a better backup quarterback option if Kirk Cousins does suffer an injury. Keep in mind in real life, Kellen Mond also looked bad against the 49ers, and the Vikings just traded for Nick Mullins this morning. But we also released Sean Mannion. I never really considered him to be the backup quarterback option. 
So now we have Newton as the backup. We get our first wide receiver mentorship here. It's Adam Phelan trying to help out Amir Smith Marset, the fourth receiver on the depth chart. So that's going to help out his route running. And let's get to this final game worth of highlights. The starters look good in the first two games, now facing what can be a really tough Denver Broncos defense. Dalvin Cook, he looks so ready to go for this season. And Kirk as well. He played well, spreading the ball around. Here's Irv Smith on the catch and run, entering a contract season. We get down to the two. Dalvin once again makes the tough play look easy. Touchdown, Minnesota. But I felt like I wanted to see Kellen Mond get a chance to play behind the starting line and with the starting receivers. The protection is different. You notice that immediately. He actually has a chance on some of these plays. And with that, gave him the comfort to actually stand in and deliver some throws to some pretty good receivers. Mond looks like a very different quarterback for the most part. There was a weird collision on that play. That one gets intercepted by Pat Sertan. But it was promising to see him play better with better players around him. We get the ball back quickly. That's intercepted by the first round pick. It's safety, Lewis Seen. Hoping he has a very big rookie season. That gets it back in the hands of Kellen Mond, who can use his legs to score the touchdown. So that's why... Kellen Mond is at least somewhat intriguing. He does have a pretty good arm, and he can run a little bit. But it's just getting him to be a more polished quarterback. This pass from Russell Wilson gets intercepted. This time, Cameron Dantzler intercepts the ball. We end up taking this down to the four-yard line where Mond hits Justin Jefferson for a preseason touchdown as he gets his warm-up gritties in before the real games begin. But I did sign Cam Newton to play as well. I was enjoying the Mond drives enough. I didn't really give Cam a lot of time here with the starters. But he did get at least one solid drive in. There he is finding Adam Thielen, who was really good in this last preseason game. Then Russell Wilson. He's dishing it out to Cortland Sutton left and right. If you watch that stream back, there was a lot of Cortland Sutton. And we did not handle him very well. I am worried about this secondary against the better receivers and better quarterbacks. Late in the game, Denver down by three, erasing the lead the starters built. But this pass is intercepted. It's rookie Andrew Booth Jr. So our top two defensive back rookies have interceptions in this game. Cam comes back. This one is complete as he gets that to Ola B.C. Johnson. And on second down, showing he can still leave the pocket and make some plays. He takes it down inside the five. And then we give it to the rookie out of North Carolina. Touchdown, Ty Chandler. We didn't get to see any big plays from the backup running backs. That was probably the top moment right there. Seven-point game, 50 seconds left to go. Brett Rippon rips it downfield to no one in particular, and we do at least take this last preseason game. Vikings looked good with the starters, not so good with the backups, and that wasn't too much of a surprise. This team needs a lot of depth, and the starters, you know, if they're all healthy, they can be pretty good. We end up leaving preseason with a few injuries to Ole Udo, Ryan Connolly, and Janarius Robinson. And here are the final stats. Kirk Cousins looked really good. Kellen Mond had one really bad game that's going to be hard to forget about. The running game struggled, but most of that was backup carries behind a backup offensive line. And receiving wise, all the starters looked really good. I also saw some good things from Tristan Jackson in this, and then a few plays here and there spread throughout the rest of the receivers. And defensively, sometimes I don't really see a lot stand out here in the preseason games, but DJ Wanham had some moments, Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith as well. I think you worry a little bit about the cornerbacks, but we'll see when the games really get underway. We then set the 53-man roster. We had to release 20 players, add some to the practice squad. So we're going to go into the season with six receivers. 
And the players going to the practice squad will be Tristan Jackson and Dan Chisina. Everybody else is on the active roster. We'll release Andrew DePaula because Madden doesn't recognize the long snapper position and Ben Ellefson. We then put some offensive linemen on the practice squad, getting down to eight total. That's typically what I do. And in franchise, you have to be kind of prepared for a couple O-line injuries here or there. You got five players. They don't usually play all 16. This team also had some veterans that were competing for backup spots, but I tend to defer to younger players with more developmental upsides. So a lot of those cuts were pretty straightforward. Chaz Surratt does not make the active roster. Overall, there aren't any major moves here, but I like to be very detailed here in this series showing you pretty much everything. We tend to have long episodes here if you're not familiar with the format, but you'll get a good idea of what it's all about here today. We get our final cuts in, Jalen Twyman to the practice squad, and we're ready to go to take on Green Bay. Just about anyway, we have some things to go through here, including our goal for this season. And the way the Vikings handled this offseason, their goal is to get back to the playoffs for the first time since 2020. They've missed the last two years, it's been disappointing, but they did not turn over this roster with a new regime. And we will stick with that idea of this team trying to make the playoffs, knowing that it's maybe a coin flip to get there. We'll choose our draft class to be a auto-generated rookie class. Excited to dive into that. And just a little look here right off the bat. Two quarterbacks in the top three. Three overall in the top ten. We got our opening day keys here ahead of our very first game against the Green Bay Packers. And this is an offensive football team. There is just no way around it. The defense is in full-on rebuild mode. But the offense is more of a win-now offense. Even with Kirk Cousins, I would say. Passing game has to be the focus with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. And hey, Kirk Cousins makes a lot of money. Time to earn it. So we're going to start off here against Green Bay. How do we focus on Aaron Rodgers right here? And consider the fact that his receivers are all veterans who are, you know, what they are at this point or unproven younger guys. I think here, just create pressure. We're trying to get two sacks in this game. We should be able to do that. Oh, everybody's got the finesse and power move boost as well. We do have to do something with scouting here. We actually have to get our scouts set. And I saw Bengal do this. I was watching his uh, Giants franchise, but I think it's just way easier to just fire everybody right off the bat and then just hire based on what you really want. So if we just take a quick look at this team, there aren't a lot of immediate needs on offense, but interior offensive line is a bit of a concern for me. We'll see about Herb Smith. If he's a 73 right now, I have to imagine re-signing him isn't going to be that difficult. I'd imagine, you know, four years, $24 million, 28 maybe. Let's see, the motivations aren't a great fit though, so maybe it does get up there. And that's one of the wrinkles here in Madden 23 franchise, negotiating with players and do they think they're a good fit with your organization or not? But I know we got to get younger on defense and really any position helps. They are most set up for the future, I would say, at safety with Lewis Seen and Cam Bynum, potentially. Bynum is only a 69 overall normal development player in here. In real life, I'm quite hopeful for him, but I know it's a longer road here in Madden. So let's just take a look here because we also have to keep an eye on the quarterbacks. And could we be in position to draft one, sit them for a year, and then maybe in year three, that's when we have the big change. I will be honoring Kirk Cousins' no trade clause in his contract. So he's basically under contract with us for two seasons, including this one. So we have five players projected in the first round or two. Looking at how I could best set this up, I think that actually a central scout focused on quarterbacks would get us the information we want here on Mateo Enriquez and Connor Addison. 
Those are both more central, I think, that would fall into for the scouting. And potentially like Howie Thompson here, but if they're top five, we got to be pretty bad to be in position to take one of them. We'll make our first scouting hire then, and this is going to be a two-star scout. We got Shelly Cannon, quarterback expertise. I didn't go three-star here. I don't think it's the time. I'm trying to think of what our top focus should be for scouting, and I think it's going to be something on defense. It could be edge rusher just to prepare for the future, but also, like, say we have a pretty good year, a good corner might help us get over the edge, and I just still think it's going to be a long-term need. So I think that's going to be our one three-star scout. So here are the five scouts I have for this year. We're focused on quarterback is kind of a medium importance need here, but then pass rusher, interior line, defensive line, and corner is the big one. We, I guess, also get a lot of secondary position expertise for linebacker in general. I'm hoping the draft experience is a lot more fun in this series than it was in the Giants. And I think some of the changes they've made are uh, definitely going to make it better than that experience, at least. So now, weekly game plan. Getting ready to take on Green Bay. And you know that Aaron Rodgers is still the focus. And I want to take away that short throw. I mean, these receivers are not the best. And it's more difficult to find them further down the field. Let's make sure we got starters here. Getting most of the reps here at these positions. They'll get the most of uh, the boost that way. Let's just go all starters here against Green Bay. And then you have to respect what is a really good defense for Green Bay. They're going to be tough all the way around. And I don't want to play super risky against them. I think that they can overwhelm the offensive line. So it's kind of boring, but throw it medium is the game plan here. And our first big practice before our first game. Hopefully no injuries here going into the Packer game. And the offense will be 100%. And the defense is as well. So with that, I think we are ready to go. Just getting in our last upgrades here. We get Armin Watts a little bit better in the run-stopping department. And he is one of the starters that is a little bit intriguing. Has a couple nice ratings there with the pass rushing getting a boost. But power moves would already be a 78. So it's at least something to work with. But it's finally time for the Brian Petrovsky era in the Minnesota Vikings franchise to get underway. We take on the Green Bay Packers. The schedule goes from 0 to 60 here in week one, a tough division game. But I think this is the ideal time to play Green Bay before those receivers get a chance to develop, maybe overtake the veterans. So they take on Green Bay, it seems, every year early in the season these days, but... I don't mind it this time around. Won't be easy. But let's see how this series gets underway. Now, I did make one change, and that is to move the 12-minute quarters because this has been a really high-scoring Madden when you simulate, and we need to make sure that our games that we watch here have a chance to do some of the same things, or we're going to have less of a chance to have players really stand out and earn developments and finish as top performers. So we got to be able to blend in with the rest of the league, basically. But here we are. Green Bay opening with the football as we start this series up. I will be simulating some of the drives, but we'll be watching a majority of this first game of the series. I just hope this secondary does well against one of the weaker receiving cores in the league. But they'll start with the throw here. They got Rodgers completing... And that might be their best receiver there, Aaron Jones. He and A.J. Dillon, nice one-two punch in the backfield. I think Jones will be used a lot as a receiver this season. Second down, Rodgers. Oh, no, Jones wasn't ready. What was that? Third down now, a little pressure on the way, and the catch is made. There is Aaron Rodgers' best friend in the whole world. It's Randall Cobb. That was a nice trade that Rodgers made to bring him in from the Texans as he put on his GM cap last training camp. That is caught on the outside now for a first down. 
Good quick hitter there against Andrew Booth there starting outside. That was Sammy Watkins on the reception. Rodgers from midfield. He dishes this one to Cobb. That's six yards. Rodgers is already in the zone, and that is the worrisome part because he'll find anybody that's open. He's already five for six. They might not try to do a whole lot here, but I think Rodgers can still be productive. We got to get some pressure and get a sack on him here to get him out of the zone. Already kind of a lengthy opening drive for Green Bay as Jones gets downhill, and that'll go for a first down. He picks up eight yards. It also seems in this game it's extremely pass-heavy, and I think they have to patch the sim stats and some of the run-pass splits. A team like Green Bay is probably not going to open with seven throws in a row or whatever it was. Pressure on the way. We haven't gotten anywhere close to Rodgers as that is caught. They toss it out now, and Jones is taken down for the loss. First one there, Jordan Hicks. That makes it third down, Green Bay. They need the seven-yard line. Rodgers has time, but nowhere to go with it as he throws it away to bring on the kicking team. And I think they have moved on from Mason Crosby here. It's a 34-yard try, though, and Green Bay does get on the board. So the defense there, a little bit of a slow start. Not able to make any plays, really. But this is an offensive football team, and let's see how they're able to start off against one of the better defenses in the NFL. But you have to love the variety of options we have here for Kirk Cousins. Can he finally put it together this year to have the season we've been waiting for? We're going to start. It's Adam Thielen on the jet sweep. And that's maybe a yard. I can totally see them making that their first play of the year in real life. Second down for Cousins. Uh-oh, in trouble quickly and engulfed in the backfield. It's a short loss, but there was pressure from all angles there for poor Kirk. Check it out again as Darisaw was beat. O'Neal eventually got beat. We got beat inside. Third and 11. Not where you want to be against this defense. Cousins, better protection. Dumps it off to Cook. Makes the first man miss, but not the second. All pro Devondre Campbell. Green Bay, play action to start things. Almost intercepted right through the hands of Harrison Smith. He's got to catch those. And they try to run it with Jones, but we have been ready for that. In these slow sim games, I'm waiting to see if the running game is really good enough. So far, it seems like a slow start for it. Third and 11 now for Rodgers. And that's not going to get it done. So a better drive there for the defense. The Vikings take over at the 28-yard line, and we're just... Calling the same play here, it's Thielen with a first down run out to the 41. We start our drives with the same exact play. They never see it coming. And now we give this one. Dancing is cooked to the outside. Across the 45, he gets seven. Dalvin Cook looks like he's so much fun in what we've seen so far in the preseason and like that play. Cousins. There's Jefferson's first catch of the year. First down to the 45 of Green Bay. Already looking better on this drive. Penalty as the catch is made by Irv Smith. And this one's going to be against the Packers. Four on the rush. And this is going to be Cook again. And he throws away the first defender. But then gets taken down by Campbell. First red zone trip of the day. You don't want to settle for three when you're here. Third and four. Cousins to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Adam Thielen is how this series gets underway.
First touchdown of the series. I'm not all that surprised. Defender was lost there. Not quite sure where the ball was in the air. But that's a pretty good start for Minnesota. 7-3, to three, and that's a risky play as Rodgers finally finds a first-round wide receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. I'm going to watch the first three drives for each team and then start to sim, and we'll just kind of go from there. Rodgers to Jones on a short second down. He gets away from Patrick Peterson, and that's a first. From the secondary, we sent the safety, but the quick pass is hauled in. Into Vikings territory. That's Christian Watson. If the Packers are to have many big plays this year, you got to think Watson is a reason why. 16 passes to four runs. And Rodgers is just a bit off the mark that time. Yeah, they've got to improve these run-pass splits. There's no reason for it to be like this. They have their live playbook data. And they've been doing this for a while. They, Oh, pressure on Rodgers as he gets dumped by Armin Watts. He gets the first sack of the season for us. But they have enough data. It should not ever be this far off. They've clearly overemphasized the passing game here on launch. Third and 23. Rodgers launches out of bounds and the defense does its job. This is our chance to really take control of this game here. Vikings at the 16-yard line. Wanting to throw quick. It's Kirk. Very short game. We head to the air. This is third and six. And Cousins goes deep. There is a penalty. And I think there was contact there against Jefferson. Oh, it's a hold. Are you kidding me? I was certain that was DPI, but apparently not. Green Bay, 15 yards here to Christian Watson as we start to simulate a little bit. And it's third and seven for the Packers. They only get that one first down on the drive, so it has been a tough start, as you might have expected. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A fumble gives the Packers a short field. They want that defense to help them out a lot this year, and they just did it in a big way. We'll have to see who put the ball on the ground for us, but it's 10-7. Irv Smith for 19 yards, a sack for Kenny Clark. You got to watch out for him, and then the penalties can add up with this team too. That was a real 2021 Vikings drive right there. So we're inside two minutes here in the first half. Green Bay has it just across midfield. Already up by three, and this is Jones, but he has nowhere to go as Watts shows up again. Heavy pressure on the way. This pass is caught, and Watson's taken down by Pat Pete. I'm not sure the blitzing's a good idea. Good pass on the outside again. That's Rodgers to Cobb. Already 28 pass attempts for Rodgers. Like, they are just choosing to not run the ball. Maybe I'm better off not using the live playbooks. I've only used those. Are the normal ones better? Do they run the ball? I really don't want to see us go down two scores here. A big third and one. Rodgers broken up in the end zone. And it's Lewis Seen who made that play. A big fourth and one stop for the defense as the Packers can only extend the lead to six points. Let's see it again here. He just breaks on it nicely, covering Sammy Watkins. I just like how, in general, this year the coverage is tighter. I think it's going to allow a lot more plays in the secondary to be made. We just end up letting this go to halftime, not using those timeouts to try to go make a play and a scoring drive. So just the one touchdown from Adam Thielen. We have not been able to control the clock like Green Bay. They have close to double the plays run that we do. So we got to do a better job in the second half of making them have faster drives. Come on, Kirk. You got to go get us some more points. One touchdown is not enough. Vikings offense a little lackluster outside of that one drive. Here's Dalvin, makes a move to the outside and picks up three. 
Cousins on second down to the outside, and that's a catch. He's found Thielen a couple times now. Let's see him get Jefferson more involved. He only has like one grab. Giving this one to Dalvin. I don't really like that play. It's just too slow developing to have a chance in Madden. On second down, this time it's K.J. Osborne, and that should be enough for a first down. And as we continue on here, I'll be customizing my own playbooks, adding plays, removing stuff. I always just open series like this with those base playbooks, getting a feel for how they're meant to be run and then making my changes. Off play action. Okay, that was a goofy play, Kirk. More play action where Cousins is comfortable. Here's Thielen breaking a tackle. Out to the Green Bay 45. A third and two run, and that will convert. We have Dalvin Cook diving ahead to the 39. On first down, it's Cook as a receiver once again. Able to get past that first defender oftentimes. He gets five. We're really, though, just chipping away. Not really getting many big plays. Packers blitz. Swung out. Madison. He gets away for a moment, but the sideline was there. Dalvin checks back in. We run it with him, and he tries to dance his way to the left and comes up short. Go for it. Go for it. Nope, they'll bring out Greg Joseph. 48-yard try. Joseph, his kick, first of the year is good. 13-10. All right, can the defense come up with some second-half plays, though? We have been good against the run, as that was one of the better Aaron Jones runs. But we got to start getting some three and outs, forcing some punts. They've already had the ball enough. Rodgers, quick throw to Tunyon. First down. We've already seen it. He doesn't need anybody to be that open to find them. On first down, that's too open. Randall Cobb. Rodgers under pressure, and that's what we've been waiting for. A sack for Dalvin Tomlinson. He won that right off the line. Just split that double team like nothing. And that's the type of play that can hopefully turn this drive around for us. What? He never went down. It was Zadarius who went down. Madden, what are you doing right now? I've not seen this before. He literally had a broken tackle animation and they ruled him down. Or forward progress stopped, which neither was really true. But it's third and 16. Rodgers from the pocket. Got his man. He'll fight. But there's still not enough there. It's fourth down. So there's been a lot of ugly football here. Cousins is sacked back inside the five. Yeah, you still got to worry about this offensive line. Like, there are some players there I like long-term. But right now, are they good enough? Cousins gets it outside. He does not take the safety, thankfully. I'm worried, though, about this play right here. I think it'll be a Dalvin run to the left. And it is. That was a bad drive. Come on, Jordan Berry. Punt this one to, like, the 40 of Green Bay for me. 45 close enough. All right. Nice kick coverage. Defense has to go and do it again now. Inside. Jones. The second try doesn't work much better than the first. One yard. Rodgers on second down. Again on target. This time it's dropped. And that was Sammy Watkins. This has been a rhythm timing passing attack. That's the first big mistake by a receiver. Rodgers goes deep, and this one is overthrown. Lewis seen on the coverage. 
So Vikings catch a bit of a break there. And now the last punt went out at the 10. This one at the 15. Come on, offense. Cousins on first down. Caught again by Thielen. Are you telling me that Jefferson hasn't been open, though? Like, I haven't seen. I'll pay more attention, but where's Justin Jefferson? Feeling. We fake it to him. Dalvin trying to fight through as he gets a few. And Rasul Douglas, who broke out with Green Bay last year, he is shaken up. They have good corners, though. I still got Eric Stokes and Jair Alexander, one of the best, one of my favorites. All right, that play is called too much. I don't even like that play. A little bit. Got to make a play, Kirk. Third and eight. Airing it out. This one's caught by Thielen. Making it look easy at the 37 of Green Bay. You got to trust these guys to go and make a play sometimes. Justin Jefferson lines up left as we run it. Downhill. Dalvin still not finding a lot to work with. But with that, everybody, we are on to the fourth quarter of this game. Defense has been all right here in the second half. The offense needs to go and get us that second touchdown. Jefferson lines up in the backfield this time. On second down, it's Cook. He's got first down yardage. We'll try Cook again. Nothing there. Uh-oh, Devondre Campbell shaken up. Now that's two injuries for Green Bay. Cousins on second down. That time he gets it to Irv Smith. Still waiting for Jefferson to show up again. He is top of your screen. It's third down. Don't want to settle for three. Cousins floats it. Caught first down. Justin Jefferson. Down to the three. Kirk's made some nice throws on this drive. Let's give him credit. And now trying to lead us into the end zone. Empty from the three. No way. The draw. Kirk. Down to the one. He didn't break the plane. I can't believe we just called that. But now... Three tight ends on second down. And throwing. Touchdown, Irv Smith. And the Vikings have taken the lead. And that would force Green Bay to be focused on scoring a touchdown instead of settling for a field goal. Two touchdown passes for Kirk Cousins. All the momentum on the side of Minnesota. Four-point game. Rodgers first down again. Perfectly thrown to Jones, who fights his way close to the 40. These throws are really impressive because I've seen, like, a lot of different quarterbacks play because I've gone through preseason. And, like, Rodgers just, he just throws it to anybody. He makes them look open. They're not even that open most of the time. That time, you know, good job by Sammy Watkins. Not a ton there. The timing has to be perfect in this game. Like, you're not going to get away with being late a whole lot. Rogers resets, and he's got a man across the middle. Here, we just got to be focused on forcing them to get three or nothing. No touchdowns on this drive. Rodgers wide open is Sammy Watkins first down and Rodgers is back in the zone that of course does concern me the draw play and Jones can't get away it's Dalvin Tomlinson not much here for Jones on the ground and we haven't even seen AJ Dillon third and ten four man rush Rodgers has time. He throws end zone. Wide open is Watkins. What happened? Where's the coverage there? We just completely lost track of him. We were covering grass, but not necessarily the receivers. Third and 
three-point game now. Vikes trail again. Cousins to the air. Irv Smith. Six and a half to go in week one. Vikings trail. Kirk Cousins has to be better in these situations. From the pocket, he completes again. That's Adam Thielen. Just taking those easy throws to Thielen every time he can get them. I have Thielen as the slot receiver, but I just don't know yet where I want to line up Jefferson. If it's the outside routes or more so inside, but he's going to do well at both. So kind of take your pick there. He just made that catch for seven yards. We take the ball to midfield. Now fake to Cook. Cousins off the mark, and he had Jefferson. That's the one you miss? Third down, and they go inside, and that was not a good call there to catch him off guard with Cook. It's going to be fourth down, and the Vikings will punt. No! How do you punt here? And then you punt poorly on top of that. So you give the ball back to that guy. You can't let him get a touchdown, or you're probably toast. But you put yourself in this situation to begin with. Rodgers on first down. Sideline, out of bounds. To the air on second down. Dumped off. Jones gets away first down. Come on. Good protection again for Rodgers. He's had that most of the day. Wide open is Tunyon. They're in field goal range now. And again, we're back in a situation where we have to force a field goal. Or we're probably losing. That's frightening. How is Rodgers out of the zone? That was his best play of the drive. Don't quite understand that, but now second down. Maybe last play before the warning. Caught by Aaron Jones. Can the defense give us a red zone stop here? 20 to 17. They'll run it with Jones. Hasn't worked all day. Won't start there. Seven yards out. Jones again up the middle and hit down at the four. Timeout, Minnesota, one left. I don't think they're running it this time. I think it's all on number 12 here. Third down, defense needs it. Touchdown, Christian Watson. We put the safety there in an impossible spot. Basically slants from both directions. And what's he going to do there? There's no chance he makes a play. 27 points from Rodgers and the Packers. And we're down 10 here with a minute 50 left to go. Only the one timeout, so not much of a chance for us left in this one. We, we can't punt there. And that's part of, you know, what you get here in Super Sim is a more universal, like, punt and kick logic. So the big thing I like about this series is the even playing field, like, if the CPU's bad when it comes to time management, then, you know, we're going to be with the same AI. I mean, if it's both bad, that's still bad, but it does make it tough, you know, winning a Super Bowl, making a good team. We've had some really tough series in the past because of this playing field. The only difference is being able to set some game plans and playbooks and then, of course, building out the roster itself. But Green Bay's offense, I mean, they played well. And our pass rush, I expected way more from them in this game. They did not play well. They did not make an impact. Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith were effectively shut out in this game. Wow, Dalvin has 10 catches. Kirk's just got to go to the end zone here. Not much time left. And this one's knocked out of bounds. Again, back to throw it deep to the end zone. Cousins making sure this is the last play of the game. 
And then padding his stats with a throw shy of the end zone. A little too on the nose there. Vikings lose the opener to Green Bay 27-17. For a while there, I liked our chances of getting that first win. But it wasn't to be. As Rodgers still looked really good, he made it work with this receiving core they've thrown together for this season. Without Aaron Rodgers, it's hard to see them scoring 27 points. That's just a tough way to get things started here. Rodgers, 34 of 47, 357 yards. And the receivers are only going to get tougher from here. Cousins, he was fine. Neither team ran the football well at all. Just 34 yards here for Dalvin Cook, who also had 10 catches. Thielen had over 100 yards. And we barely saw Justin Jefferson. He was not used down the field much at all. 16 tackles for Eric Kendricks. We only had two sacks by Tomlinson and Watts, two interior guys who also had the tackles for loss. Sedarius and Daniil were just really quiet. So in this series, if you've never watched this before, we don't go through every game. There will be simulated games next episode. We tend to watch a handful of games a year, enough to really get a feel for the team and to see them play. Makes it a lot easier to get connected to the players when you actually see them play. But that was a rough way to get the season started. We're going to go through week two against the Eagles next episode and then probably simulate our first games and kind of go from there. And the worse we play, the faster these seasons go, the better we are, the slower we go as we try to see a playoff run unfold. Well, we didn't look like a playoff team there in week one, did not play well enough, lost by 10 at home. And the next time we play Green Bay, who knows, those receivers might be more developed and it could be an even more difficult game. So, not how I wanted us to get started, but, I mean, that's what it's like as a Vikings fan at times. All defensive players just lose play recognition for next game, that's great. Dalvin's not happy about it. We got him the ball a good bit, 10 catches, like 34 yards rushing. So that is going to bring an end to this episode, everybody. A tough way to get this series started, but we know this team is probably going to be in most of their games. Finishing games hasn't been their forte. Is that about to change in 2022? We'll have to see. But leave your thoughts down below in the comment section, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this first real episode of the series, getting into our first real game. A lot more with the Vikings on the way. As we get into this rebuild franchise, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.